Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the fourth set of regulations that we are handling on this um, Friday, 18th June 2021. Just a recap, we have so far reviewed the draft civil aviation radio navigation aids regulations, the draft civil aviation communication procedures, the draft civil aviation air traffic services regulations, and now we are starting off with the draft civil aviation communication system regulations that will be presented by Mr. Porter Soganga, the chief CNS inspector. We will also concurrently have an opportunity to review part of the um, regulations that were presented earlier on this will be the draft civil aviation personnel licensing regulations to to help us do this we will have the panelist that is mr mr um james moshemi as well as uh, mr alois lumutu who will be able to respond to any of the questions or input that we have received so far on the draft civil aviation personnel licensing regulations just some small housekeeping um on the top right hand side of your screen, we do have the polls section. We are requesting for your feedback in terms of how the um, how the stakeholder forum has been conducted, as well as the platform that we have used. This information will be important as it will help us in preparing for any future public participation forums that we hold. Um, at KCAA. We also have the questions tab. In case you have any questions that you need to raise, um, kindly type them down or write them down under the ask a question tab and the panelists will be able to respond to the same. Please note in case you also intend to have the flow for purposes of um, addressing the forum, kindly indicate so under the questions tab and you will be given an opportunity to take the stage and address the meeting that we are having right now. For those who are following us on Facebook, um, we will also be taking your comments and channeling them to the correct um, panelists for purposes of uh, response and feedback from KCAA. After this exercise, we will be um, um, collating all the responses that we have received, all the comments, and um, the appropriate response given by KCAA will also be included there. This will be available on the KCAA website. And once that is done, um, you will be notified from the uh, through the email address that you used to register for this particular session. So to take us through the first set of regulations, that it's Mr. Potas Oganga, the Chief CNS Inspector, who will go through the draft civil aviation communication systems regulations after he has completed responding to the input and comments that have been received so far. We'll start on the draft civil aviation personnel licensing regulations immediately. So Buana uh, Potas Oganga, kindly take the floor and uh, lead us through the... Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much, uh, <coughs> Dennis, for the introduction. So I wish to welcome all of you for this uh, third set of the CNS-related regulations. So these particular regulations, the Civil Aviation Communication service of the civil aviation communication systems regulations are actually anchored on uh, ICAO Annex 10, Volume 3, that is uh, Aeronautical Telecommunications Communication Systems. So again, just to remind you, these particular regulations were published in uh, June 2018. So we have not had any annex amendments or IK annex amendments to this volume since then, but then uh, there still be the need to review these regulations in order to take care of uh, some uh, omissions which were noted in the regulations. So there have also been cases of uh, uh, realignments and rearrangements which were necessary and uh, in some of the schedules, we noted we had a lot of material 
a lot of technical material which uh, needed not to be included in the regulations. So as a result, some of them were moved to some other regulatory document documentation. That is the manual of implementing standards. So I'll quickly take you over the matrix which indicates the changes which are proposed to be done on these regulations. So the first uh, change is just in the citation, just the year of, of uh, the year of the regulations. So what is currently there is 2018, and uh, the proposed regulations are supposed to be communication systems regulations 2021. So that's just that change of 2018 to 2021. So new definitions which have come up and have been included in the interpretation. So there are, there are terms which are used in the regulations, but uh, there was they were never uh, included or uh, defined in the interpretation. So some of the terminologies used was ATSEP to mean air traffic safety electronics personnel then the CNS and uh, CNS provider. So CNS to mean communication, navigation and surveillance and then the CNS provider to mean the provider of the CNS services. So just like uh, with the other two sets of regulations we presented earlier, we had the general part of the provision which was a bit general and not very specific. So again, this has been amended to read the general provisions, general requirements for the provision of CNS services. So in this regulation, yes, as we said, they are anchored on uh, an extend volume three. Uh, so we have picked a lot a number of standards, all the standards from those uh, that particular volume of the annex, but then there are those other requirements which are general, uh, require which are general and are required to be fulfilled by whoever is providing the CNS services. This might not be in the annex, but they are necessary for uh, the efficient and effective provision of uh, CNS services. So in all the regulations where the word air navigation services provider has been uh, or exists or then this has been replaced with CNS provider to be specific to the provision of CNS services. Then in the existing current regulation, regulation number 17, we had uh, two distinct or different items, so very independent, but they were, they were put together in one particular regulation. So there was a there was the item on facility malfunction and incident reporting and then there was the, the part on radio interference reporting. So these ones for purposes of clarity and to ensure the independence of the two, the two have been, uh, the, two, the two functions or the two items have been separated to form two different regulations. So 17 for radio frequency management and interference reporting and then 18 for facility malfunction, incident and operational status of CNS systems. So two regulations coming out of one which was originally regulation 17 and of course with that uh, separation it means the subsequent regulations are renumbered. Then there's regulation 48, which because of the renumbering, the introduction of the other regulation now is regulation 49. So we have a, a reference to the third schedule. And as I said earlier on, some of these schedules being too big, having too many figures, too many tables and a lot of text have been moved to the manual of implementing NS standards. And of course, with the 
removal or deletion of that uh, third schedule, the subsequent schedules now have been renumbered. Similarly, the fourth schedule, uh, which has specifications for mod S packet formats. Again, this one, all these contents of this fourth schedule have been moved to the manual of implementing NS standards. Then what follows is basically the renumbering of the schedules having deleted third schedule and fourth schedule. It means now in regulation 52, the fifth schedule uh, becomes the third schedule and uh, the rest follows like that. Then the sixth schedule for regulation 53 becomes the fourth schedule and then on regulation 54, seventh schedule becomes the fifth schedule. Then uh, the tenth schedule, so is that basically just the renumbering, so renumbering of the schedules, then eighth schedule becomes the sixth, then uh, regulation 57, the ninth schedule will be seventh, eleventh schedule, which was also very big, has also been uh, converted to manual of uh, implementing standards, and then the following schedules, the, the, the subsequent schedules are renumbered. Twelfth schedule again, had a lot of uh, items, very many pages making the regulation too bulky. So again, this one has been converted to manual of implementing NS standards and uh, regulation 76 also. The third, the 13th schedule has also been move to the manual. The regulation 79 is done similarly. The 14th schedule has also been converted to the manual of implementing standards and uh, the 15th schedule the same. So as I said at the very beginning, there were no major amendments, there were no amendments to this particular volume of the annex. So the only thing that was noticed is that the, 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 the schedules were very big and they have mostly been converted into the manual. So you will see all the other regulations, 82. And then now the 16th schedule has now been moved to 9th schedule. So following the deletion of the others. And basically that is what we have then 17th schedule also moved to manual of implementing NS standards. So there are, there are, we didn't have a lot of uh, update on this other than uh, moving of the, some of the schedules and converting them into manual of implementing standards. So that brings me to the end of the presentation of the matrix of changes for the communication systems regulations. Thank you and back to the moderator. So, uh, thank you very much, Bona Potas Oganga, for taking us through the <coughs> sorry, through the draft civil aviation um, communication systems regulations 2021. Um, I don't know whether we have received any additional questions or comments, but as has been mentioned uh, before, the changes. Um, on this particular set of regulations, which is the communication systems regulations, are greatly advised by the updates that have taken place or the changes that have taken place to ICAO Annex 10, that's volume three, communication systems. So we will be requesting for comments, questions, as well as input on the draft civil aviation communication systems regulations. If you have any questions, kindly indicate the same by, raise, uh, by writing on the ask a new question tab. Uh, in case you intend to make any um, oral presentations, kindly in, uh, do so and you will be given the stage to address the particular forum that we are having right now. No questions have been raised so far. Um, if there are any, if there is any input that we had received from the from the 
um, stakeholders, I will kindly request that we go through the same um, just before we take any additional questions on this particular forum. Bonoganga, kindly confirm whether there are any questions that um, had been received through the dedicated KCAA email address, kcas2021 at kca.or.ke. So from the email, we, that particular address, we will not receive any, but uh, we are hoping you, we, are, we, are, we are going to get your comments and uh, when you get them, we'll incorporate them accordingly. So we still have time, just use the email, send your comments, your questions, and uh, we'll uh, accordingly incorporate them in this uh, reviewed regulations. Thank you. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, as you've heard, we, are, we at KCA are still open to receiving any additional comments and input on the regulations that have been, uh, on the regulations that have just been presented. This is a draft civil aviation communication systems regulations, as well as any of the other regulations that have been presented from Monday to date. In case you have any input or comments, you can do so by, uh, um, the options for you to give your comments or inputs. The first one, you can write under the uh, um, ask a new question um, provision. It's a blue button on the bottom of your screen. Um, this will be channeled to the panelists who will be able to respond to the same appropriately. Secondly, you can request to make um, an oral presentation, give us your comments, and the same will be recorded and um, responded to accordingly. Finally, you can also send your written input through the K to KCAA through the dedicated email address that is kcars2021 at kcaa.or.ke. We'd like to thank all the participants who have been asking questions throughout the forum. Um, for those who have been um, giving us their oral presentations, as well as asking the questions under this um, particular platform. We also want to thank all of you who are following us on uh, Facebook. Uh, any comments that you have raised there will be responded to um, appropriately. They'll be channeled to the um, to the appropriate participant for purposes of um, response um, on the questions. So um, I can see a question here by one Mr. Daniel Kazungu. Um, it's a comment. It's a comment as well as a proposal. The question is, is a new volume of an extent referred to as communication systems and procedures relating to ARPA's communication channels, C2. Can that be included in the regulations? Thank you very much for the proposal. Um, as you may have noticed, we promulgated the Civil Aviation and Manned Aircraft System regulations in um, 2020. So we are on board and taking taking um, matters are pass um, in terms of oversight as well as um, service provision. Uh, towards this end, we have also incorporated a number of uh, provisions touching on ARPAS, especially under personnel licensing regulations, as you will see shortly. Now, when it comes to the, um, the C2 links, I will invite my colleague, uh, Potas uh, Oganga, to respond to the same as appropriate. Potas. Well, thank you very much, Dennis, and uh, thank you, Daniel, for that uh, observation. So you say there's a new volume of an extent referred to as communication systems and procedures relating to ARPA's communication channel C2. That is very correct. So we have a, a state letter from ICAO, which came out uh, sometime last year regarding the introduction of volume six to an extent with this particular title. Uh, this is in relation to the communication, uh, communication standard when it comes to ARPAS. So there are the operational bit which will be the ARPA system, but then there's the, the telecommunication part that is uh, using the C2 technology, which has been included in an extend volume six. However, 
if from the Akeo State letter, this particular provision or this particular requirement will not be applicable till the year 2025. And as such, we are currently in 2021, that is four years to come. So as such, we have decided that because uh, the provision is not becoming applicable right now, but in 2025, there is actually no need at this particular time to incorporate the regulations or to come up with that new set of regulations. But as time moves, maybe in another two, three years time, when we go to our next circle, of review of regulations, then uh, we'll definitely come up with this particular set of regulations. So it means the CNS will have six sets of regulations. So thank you very much, Daniel. Hope that answers you. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Pata Sodanga, for your feedback on that. Um, as you are aware, ICAO has the various um, timelines when uh, most of the provisions in the annexes become applicable. For this particular one, as you have been advised, it's 2025. So KCA will be um, to start with uh, investing in the appropriate um, infrastructure to ensure that this is uh, possible. However, we will keep on um, interacting with you, our stakeholders, for purposes of receiving your input and comments on this to, to ensure that um, we work together through this um, regulation, regulation making exercise. So we still are requesting for any additional comments and input on uh, the draft civil aviation um, communication systems regulations 20 21 before we get into the next set of regulations that is being presented for the second time and we are having this second presentation owing to the requests um, that we have received so far it's quite overwhelming in terms of the request to uh, redo the civil aviation personnel licensing regulations 2021 we will during this presentation um, take you through the matrix of changes that has been uh, that has been um, proposed by the Civil Aviation Authority. Please note that what will be what is going to be presented is the proposals that the CAA intends to make on the draft Civil Aviation Personnel Licensing Regulations 2018. However, we are still open to receiving any additional input and comments over the on the draft civil aviation personnel licensing regulations please note after the end of this um, exercise we will collect all the comments received and put them in a tabular format and the same will be posted on the kcaa website where you'll be notified that they've been posted through the email address that you use to register for this particular event so as we still wait for a number of uh, comments, I'll request the next set of um, panelists who will be taking us through the Civil Aviation Personnel Licensing Regulations. That's our Senior Personnel Licensing Officer, Mr. James Moshemi, to come on stage and take us through the next set of regulations. We, he will be assisted by Mr. Alois Lumutu for purposes of making responses to the draft civil aviation personnel licensing regulations comments that we have received so far and that we continue receiving through this session. So Bwana Moshemi, kindly um, take the stage and uh, take us through the matrix of changes to the personnel licensing regulations. Please note that all the, um, throughout the sessions, you, we will still be accepting your comments and questions for purposes of um, having them channeled to the right panelists for purposes of um, response. So Mr. Um, James Moshemi, kindly take the floor for purposes of taking us through the next set of regulations. Karibu Wano Moshemi. Thank you, Dennis. And uh, it's a very good morning. It's almost afternoon. Uh, good morning, everyone. And I want to trust that we are all uh, tuned in as we continue with uh, the participation as far as the uh, regulations are concerned. So this uh, morning and into the afternoon, we will again be looking at the draft uh, personal licensing 2021 regulations. And uh, 
I want to trust that we shall be able to follow. Uh, as you can see right on your screen, we have the matrix of changes, uh, the proposed changes. Uh, on one side, we have the 2018 regulations and the proposed text as it as it is proposed to appear in the 2021 uh, regulations. It's my belief that it is now uh, fully on the screens and that we are able to start. Welcome. My name is James Mushemi once again. I work for the KCA and I'm glad to be uh, participating in this and uh, co-working with you as far as the process of regulation making is concerned. Uh, the first amendment, as you can see, is uh, um, just issues of a narration that this, uh, that it, for any regulation that will come into force on a particular day, that may come into force later after the promulgation of the regulations, and that is uh, the regulation 139 as guided by ICAO. On uh, regulation number two, we have uh, definitions, and it is a definition that has been changed uh, to match the new definition given by ICAO. At this juncture, just, just allow me to say that uh, we will be co-hosting this uh, session with my colleague from uh, Airworthiness Department, uh, Buana Lois Lumutu, so that we are able to uh, go in tandem and answer any queries or issues as pertain to personal licensing regulations because it is the issue of personal licensing on one side and uh, uh, and uh, alongside it is the licensing of uh, other set of people for example Lumutu will be handling the licensing of aircraft maintenance engineers we also have the licensing of uh, air traffic controllers flight dispatchers and uh, cabin crew so Bona Lumutu regulation 2 is uh, may require any clarity from your side Uh, thank you, Banam Chemi. Regulation 2 is uh, about approved maintenance organization, which just changed uh, the meaning. And now it means an organization approved by the authority to perform maintenance of aircraft, engine, propeller, or parts thereof, and operating under the supervision of the authority. That is the change that we made to define it as per the ICAO definition. Thank you. Uh, before we move to the next page, we have uh, at number four, we have uh, regulation number two. Uh, we only changed, uh, we only corrected uh, an error uh, in the meaning of ATSEP. ATSEP stands for air traffic safety electronic uh, safety air traffic services electronic personnel and we only change this to ensure that we capture the correct meaning as far as ICAO is concerned. In number five, the same regulation two, we have a uh, definition of heavier than air and we are saying in the gap that uh, it wrongly appears under the definition of glider. So we only separated uh, heavier than air from uh, glider, they were tied together uh, as a type of error and it has been corrected in regulation two. Going on, we have uh, the definition of night, which has now been uh, amended to cover the new definition that is provided by Annex uh, 1. And uh, this is where they bring in the element of the evening uh, when the sun center is, uh, sun's disk is six degrees. Let me read all of it. Night. The new definition reads the hours between the end of evening civil twilight and the beginning of morning civil twilight or such other period between sunset and sunrise as may be specified by the authority where civil twilight ends in the evening when the center of the sun's disk is six degrees below the horizon and begins in the morning when the center of the sun's disk is six degrees below the horizon this is a new definition uh, from the annexes. I am at number seven and I'm trying to be as slow as possible. We have a definition of uh, basic training and we are only correcting a type of error. The word air traffic safety 
had a spelling mistake and this is what we seek to to correct at this uh, uh, in this regulation also uh we have a definition of category two that is cut two operations and uh, the error there you can see the gap is that 30 meters is uh not equivalent to 10 feet is supposed to be equivalent to 100 feet and therefore we have corrected that so instead of saying 10 feet we say 100 feet moving on we have uh, regulation number nine that lists the licenses issued under this regulation under the personal licensing regulations and uh, one error we are correcting here is uh, ATSEP. We had put ATSEP or had ATSEP had, had wrongly been put under pilot licenses. Uh, so now we have put them, separated them. And they, so they are, now we have uh, an additional license down there, the ATSEP license and the new remote pilot license. The RPL license um, regulations are covered elsewhere, but we make note of it to give, uh, to give it a force in law. I am in number 10. Thank you. Regulation number five again. We have just uh, included 1E, and this is only for the purposes of, uh, of numbering. I saw also a comment uh, on Monday when we first uh, went through these regulations and somebody talked about numbering and this has been taken into effect into consideration to ensure that uh, we take care of the numbering. So that is covered in page six, page seven and page uh, eight and nine. So nothing changes as far as the text is concerned here. It is only uh, correcting the numbering. Uh, in the same bit, uh, category C has been included, as you can see right in the screen in front of you, uh, to cater now for categories, uh, has been uh, expurged, that is. So we have A, B1, and B2. And uh, as we continue, Alois Lumutu will explain why Category C has been expurged. In the same list, we have uh, part E that has been changed from electronic systems fitted to all aircraft to avionics. And at this juncture, I will invite Lumut to cater for those, to take care of those two. Why category C has been expurged and uh, B2 moving to avionics. Welcome, Bwana Lomutu. Okay, thank you. Uh, the current uh, uh, provision on our regulations, we have um, B1, B2, and Category A, and Category C. In the amendment proposal, we are proposing that we only issue B1 and B2. Uh, in fact, uh, for the purpose of the people participating, will not also be issuing category A. So that will be uh, included in the final draft as an amendment. Now on under B1 and B2, we have subcategories for B1, where we have B1.1, fixed wing aeroplane turbine, B1.2, fixed wing aeroplane piston, B1.3, fixed wing uh, uh, rotorcrafts turbine, B1.4, uh, rotorcrafts or helicopters, piston. And then we have B2, that is currently called electronic systems fitted on all aircrafts. We are proposing to change it to read B2 avionics. Uh, those are the changes that we have made in the categories of AML uh, license. Thank you. Uh, once again, Lois. And uh, as you can see highlighted in red, the rest of it is only numbering. The same text appears in the 2018 regulations. And all we have done is to uh, continue the numbering uh, to correct a previous type of error. So you can see 10 is in red, 11, 12, they had all appeared, but all we are doing is to ensure that now they appear uh, correctly numbered. There was a problem somewhere. We moved from number 
from uh, somewhere from before number 10 we went back again to number to number three now they continue flowing now we move on to regulation number seven and uh, it talks about the classes uh, that may be issued for aviation repair specialists and once again uh, my colleague uh, and co-host uh, Lois uh, will tackle this Now, um, on the proposed uh, amendment, we are proposing to include the following as uh, classes for aviation repair specialists authorization. The CA will, uh, we are proposing to issue authorization on propellers, computer, instruments, accessory, components, welding, sheet metal, composite repair, painting, NDT, and any other authorization as determined by the authority. In this one, we have just included the three that were causing confusion. Uh, we included sheet metal, composite repair, and painting, which was missing on the previous list. As I move on, item number 12, regulation nine. An aircraft maintenance engineer license is valid for a period of 60 months. We have increased the period of validity of AML from 24 months to 60 months. Good. Thank you, Alois. I will continue regulation number nine. We are talking about a ground instructor license. Now we have changed this. We have, uh, we say we propose to use the word authorization. At this juncture, uh, allow me to uh, tackle one question that was asked, uh, one person asked, actually a number of people say that there was no definition of ground instructor in the regulations and uh, the ground instructor definition is covered at the authorized instructor. If you go to the definitions, you will find that we have defined who an authorized instructor is and amongst those people who are defined as authorized instructor, one of them is a ground instructor. So I want to believe that uh, uh, this uh, question how will be, uh, or rather has been uh, uh, correctly answered now. Going on to, uh, to regulation number 11, sub-regulation 2, we have rewarded for clarity. There was a confusion in the grammar used where we say that the authority shall ensure that other contracting states are able to confirm the validity. We found that the owners may not be in the authority to ensure, but so it was rewarded now to read the authority. Having, having issued a license, shall upon request of another contracting state, confirm the validity of the license. And this is rewarded for clarity and in alignment with Annex 1. I have moved on to the next page. We are now at page 17. We have regulation number 11, sub-regulation 7. Uh, the only thing we have added here is the flight engineers highlighted in red. And we realize that uh, both the ATPL holder and the flight engineer license, their interval period for uh, or changes after they attain the age of uh, 40. Uh, initially, we had only talked about the ATPL holder, and now we have included the flight engineer. Now, regulation number 11, still in page seven, on page 17, we are proposing in the personnel licensing 2021 regulations to include the clause that uh, uh, in regulation 11.9 that an applicant for renewal of a license or certificate whose medical is conducted within 45 days before the license or certificate current expiry date will use the license or certificate expiry date as the start of the new validity period. And part B, we are proposing to say an applicant whose medical examination is not conducted within 45 days of the license or certificate expiry date will use the date of the medical examination as a start date of the new validity period. This has been uh, picked from Annex 1 
in fact it has been part of our tgms for a long time and there has been queries especially during the corona period uh, for asking questions about validity of licenses and we have included this to ensure that uh, we take care of uh, such queries but this is a uh, word for word uh, picked from what is in annex one uh regulation number 12 i mean page 19 item number 17 which is regulation 12 used to read that a license holder shall inform the authority of confirmed pregnancy or any decrease and it was felt that we redraft this section because issues of pregnancy are dealt with in detail uh, from regulation 188 uh, there had been a query that uh, there are many holders of licenses, especially the male gender, who may not be able to inform the authority at any one time of confirmed pregnancy, and it raised uh, a concern, and therefore the drafters felt that we tackle this uh, well in Regulation 188. So issues of uh, pregnancy as required in Annex 1 are well taken care of in Annex, uh, sorry, in Regulation 188. Item 18 on the curtailment of uh, privileges of pilots. Regulation number 15. We have not changed any meaning or text in this one. We have only uh, taken the word, uh, the acronym ATPL, and now put it in full. Airline transport pilot license in full. There is no change in meaning. There is no change in text. Uh, in regulation 18, I'm now in page 20 of the matrix that is in front of your screen, uh, Regulation 18, 1A, we have said that except for ferry flight or test flight, or as the authority may decide or demonstrate, uh, we only corrected the error to say as the authority may decide, it is a person who may be, who is expected to demonstrate, not the authority. We had said, the, it had read as if it's the authority to decide or to demonstrate yet it is not the authority that is being given a license, it is uh, the, the, the person applying for ferry or uh, test pilot. We're going to regulation number 23, and uh, my colleague once again is, uh, is ready to tackle regulation 23. Welcome, Alois. Thank you. On regulation 23, this is about validation of maintenance engineer's license and the changes that we made here is that a person who holds a current and valid aircraft maintenance engineer license issued by another contracting state in accordance with annex one so in that the statement in accordance with annex one was missing so we've just uh, 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 included that text and then we said may apply for and may be issued a certificate of validation with appropriate ratings if the applicant one holds an aircraft maintenance engineer license which is not under an order or re of revocation or suspension by the country that issued the license two holds a license that does not contain an endorsement stating that the applicant has not met all of the standards of the authority for that license and does not currently hold a license issued by the authority. We have added the fourth condition that you must have a minimum of four years experience exercising the privileges of the foreign license. This is informed by the uh, 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 standard practice so that we only validate uh, licenses for people who have demonstrated experience and skills in the ratings that they are seeking. Uh, the next is the an applicant for validation of an aircraft maintenance engineer license under this regulation shall submit his license in English language or accompanied by an English language translation for those licenses that are not in English on items specified on the first schedule of this regulation. The first schedule will specify the minimum information required for the applicant to submit before we validate uh, the license. And this uh, regulation is a new regulation that we've introduced just to take care of those people who are bringing licenses that are not in English language. Then the authority may not place upon a certificate of validation privileges beyond those granted by a foreign license. 
this is um, was in previous but we have just included the word may not for clarity now the fourth the application four says an applicant for a certificate of validation shall present to the authority the foreign license and evidence of the maintenance experience this evidence was missing in the previous regulation and we're proposing that for validation to be processed you you present the maintenance experience item subdivision five the validation certificate shall be issued for a minimum non-renewable period of 12 months currently we are giving validation for a period of six months we have extended this to 12 months but non-renewable that is the change that we've made there and then uh, sub regulation six except for the purpose of maintenance release for a ferry flight or test flight outside Kenya an applicant for certificate of validation shall pass a knowledge test in air law relevant to the license to be validated this we have made a provision for uh, people who probably are importing aircraft that are in foreign land and the people who are experienced on this aircraft may not be required to come to Kenya to sit for validation or to, or to sit for air law. So under this provision, we are provided that they may, we may validate their licenses for the purpose of signing the aircraft for test flight or ferry flight to Kenya when they are out of the territory of Kenya. Now, Regulation 24, we've made some amendments and now it reads, a person who holds a current aircraft maintenance engineer license issued by another contracting state in accordance with ICAO Annex 1. This statement was missing in the previous regulation. May apply and be issued an equivalent license with the appropriate ratings or group ratings if the following requirements are met. So in that regulation, we just included or in accordance with ICAO Annex and we have also in included the group ratings which was missing. Under that regulation again, an applicant for an aircraft maintenance engineer license under this regulation shall submit his license in English language or accompanied by an English language translation on items specified on the first schedule of these regulations. This is similar for the requirement for validation. Uh, regulation 22, 24, sub 2, we made some amendments and it now reads, an applicant for conversion shall A, present to the authority the foreign license and evidence of at least four years aircraft maintenance engineer's experience, demonstrate knowledge to the satisfaction of the authority and relevant to the license to be converted on and also do air law and applicable airworthiness requirements. This one we've just amended, A, we have introduced A and B, which was missing on the, on the previous regulation. And then uh, regulation two again, in addition to the requirements of sub-regulation one, the applicant shall, one, present to the authority, the foreign license and evidence of at least four years. Okay, that is uh, the requirement again for conversion demonstrate knowledge to the satisfactory of the authority and relevant to the license to be converted. Okay, in sub-regulation three, the authority may transfer a type rating from a foreign license for the purpose of conversion of aircraft maintenance engineer's license if one, the aircraft type ratings or group ratings is endorsed on a foreign license, B, the applicant is current on the aircraft type and see the type of aircraft is registered in Kenya. This one we've just introduced ratings or group ratings that were missing in the previous regulation. Okay, then we have deleted sub regulation 8 where we say the authority shall only convert ratings on the foreign license together. Sorry together with the conversion of a license. This has been covered in the uh, sub 3 and 2. So this sub 8 is deleted. Uh, 
Now, there's a new requirement for automatic validation where we have to uh, validate if you want us to automatically recognize or validate or convert your license. The authority may automatically validate or convert a foreign aircraft maintenance engineer's license issued by other contracting state, provided that A, the authority and the other contracting states shall have one, adopted common licensing regulations that are compliant with ICAO Annex 1, two, entered into a formal agreement recognizing automatic validation process, three, established a surveillance system to ensure the continuing implementation of the common licensing regulations, and four, registered the agreement with the ICAO pursuant to the Article 83 of the Convention on the National Civil Aviation and B, the authority when issuing aircraft maintenance license, ratings or certificate under the requirements of this sub-regulation shall one, endorse the license rating or certificate to indicate that it is rendered valid through registered agreement with ICAO in accordance with sub-regulation 1D of this regulation. Two, issue a numbered attachment to the license, rating or certificate with the information specified in the first schedule of this regulation. This has been introduced to provide for uh, automatic recognition, validation, and or conversion for licenses that we consider are foreign. But to make it clear, so far, the authority has not entered into any agreement with any state. So this is just a provision that in the event we have entered in that agreement, we can be able to recognize such licenses. Thank you, Alois. Yes. Uh, thank you. That is very good uh, clarification. We are now at uh, page 32, uh, item number 31, regulation 26. Uh, we have introduced a new sub-regulation and in the gap, we are seeing that the existing regulations have not specified the timelines within which candidates should accomplish knowledge test examinations. Uh, le this leaves a gray area and proper guidance is required. This is an issue that has been uh, happening for quite some time. And when the draft has sat down, we felt that there was need to specify these timelines. Uh, and I will also add here that this um, particular amendment is taken from existing uh, uh, technical guidance material that has been there for, uh, that has been enforced for quite some time, and we have only graduated them from now to GMs into the regulations. And therefore, we propose uh, in regulation 26, sub regulation 4, uh, to say as follows that candidates shall be granted a partial pass when they acquire passes in not less than 50% of the aeronautical knowledge subjects prescribed in these regulations for PPL, CPL, MPL, ATPL, and FOO. Item two, candidates sitting for PPL shall be required to accomplish a total pass of all subjects within a six months period from the date of acquiring a partial pass. And uh, you will recall that in the past, it used to be a shorter period. We have uh, considered a request that have come from ATOs and other stakeholders, and we have taken it to six months. And number two, candidates sitting for CPL, MPL, ATPL, and FO shall accomplish or shall be required to accomplish a total pass of all subjects within 12 months. This means that when a candidate starts and accomplishes their partial pass, uh, for the PPL candidates, they have a whole six months to accomplish the remaining papers. And for the other candidates in item three, they have a period of 12 months uh, to accomplish uh, a, a full pass. Uh, regulation 29, uh, there is no change in meaning. All we did was to add um, uh, the word uh, only. So we propose to say that pra uh, for practical tests, required aircraft and equipment, we are only saying uh, in part B. Uh, down there, you can see we are saying in part B has a valid certificate of airworthiness has a valid certificate of airworthiness. We are doing this to ensure that these provisions do not counter what is uh, put in other regulations, and therefore somebody may um, 
misinterpret to say that uh, they are able to probably go and do a test with an aircraft although the aircraft does not have a valid certificate of airworthiness so it was found important for us to clarify that such an aircraft to be used for a practical test shall hold a valid certificate of airworthiness in page 35 i'm now in regulation number 31 we have only rewarded, there is no change in meaning, but uh, matters arising as far as uh, uh, logging of flight time is concerned, we have now included, this is actually already there in the operations of aircraft uh, regulations, we have now included to say uh, in item three, sub-regulation two, item three, place and time of departure and arrival, and the times to be in UTC and block to block. This is only put here for clarity purposes. There is no change in meaning. Uh, in the previous regulation, we already had location where the aircraft departed and arrived. But you realize, especially in, the, in a kind of a busy environment like what we have in our country, we have one aircraft probably fly, uh, flying five, six times in a day with different persons. And therefore, we may not be able to uh, uh, pick the exact uh, flight we're interested in if all flights are logged without uh, timings, the correct timings. Regulation 39, we are only correcting a typo error. They had used the word visio instead of visual and that has been corrected in regulation number 39. In regulation uh, 42, we are only aligning uh, the numbering. You can see regulation number 42 an applicant for a PPL shall have demonstrated a level of knowledge appropriate to the privileges granted to the holder of such a license and appropriate to the category of aircraft intended to be included in the license in at least the following subjects. It had started from B. So now we have uh, aligned the numbering now to start correctly from A. Uh, same case in uh, regulation number 49 in part B we are correcting uh, the type of error that you can see down there to be able to read as follows. In addition to the areas of operation specified in paragraph A, the applicable areas of operation for a multi-agent class rating as follows. The previous one had rating without a G, and all we are doing is to reward for clarity. Once again, reg regulation 50, numbering has now been inserted. So the only amendment there is one. There was 50 without, uh, just as a standalone uh, 50, and now has been rewarded to have 50 sub-regulation one. In regulation 54, once again, is a typo error that we are correcting. We had seen a uh, ATPL instead of an, and we are correcting that typo error. Uh, down there, there is regulation 68. I'm in page 37. In regulation 68, this is the gap that has been found, uh, especially from, uh, um, you know, people operating this type of aircraft. The gap found is that there is no provision for type rating training for aircraft above 5,700 kilos, that is 12,500 pounds, where flight simulator uh, training devices are not available. And uh, we propose to add a new sub-regulation as follows. For airplanes of maximum certificated takeoff mass of 5700 kgs, where no flight simulator is available locally or internationally, the authority may approve subject to meeting the requirements of the civil aviation operations of aircraft for commercial air transport and uh, civil aviation, general aviation regulations, training to be conducted in the actual aircraft. And the training shall meet the same requirements as if the training was conducted in a level D flight simulator training device. So this has been uh, included to cater for uh, those type of aircraft that uh, where no simulators are available. Uh, we have regulation 801. Uh, that made reference to the old 2013 regulations and therefore that has been deleted, just correcting that type of error. 
I'm now in uh, page 39. We are saying, uh, we are correcting a typo error. Uh, when we say a person that uh, holds or hold, we remove that S just to say shall hold a license because the previous word up there is shall. So it, we cannot continue reading as shall holds. It should be shall hold. And it is only corrected for clarity. Regulation number 88. Uh, we had made uh, in the previous, in the current regulations 2018, we had made a uh, citation of the civil aviation uh, operation of aircraft and the drafters felt that we need to make uh, a correction there and to make reference to all the regulations. They say these regulations, you know, because these regulations are the civil aviation, the bracket is just to specify which in particular, but these are all these regulations and therefore that has been taken care of. Uh, in regulation 88. Regulation number 89, we are correcting only uh, for clarity. We are saying has logged down there, we have said has logged not less than 20 instructional hours or so the or is to as a continuation so that it does not look like all of them are the same requirements. So or means either you have met this or you have met the other one. Regulation 91, flight examiner, the title, the subtitle of that regulation is the flight examiner requirements. And we have rewarded this to say flight examiner requirements and privileges because in the body of the regulations, you will find that we are tackling both their requirements and their privileges. And therefore we add this in the title. Uh, in the same regulation 91, we have made reference to what we are talking about the flight instructor in regulation number 88. And we have picked the same and required the same for the flight examiner. Therefore, sub-regulation 5A shall read the subject to compliance with the requirements specified in this regulation, the privileges of the examiner's authorization are to conduct skill tests and proficiency checks for a license and ratings. Then we add a new B that a flight examiner, this is now picked exactly from the flight instructor, now to also cover the flight examiner to say that a flight examiner shall not endorse one a logbook of a pilot for a flight checkout or practical test unless that flight examiner has conducted a review of that pilot in accordance with the requirements of regulation 29 and a logbook of a pilot for an instrument proficiency check unless that flight examiner has te tested that pilot in accordance with the requirements of these regulations. Uh, moving on to page number 42. We are talking about the ground instructor license in 113, 114, 115, and we are now calling them the ground instructor authorization. We are calling them the ground instructor authorization, and that is taken care of in quite a number of regulations. 113, uh, you know, as you can see, even when we move on in 114, uh, any place where the word ground instructor license appears, we propose now to call them the ground instructor authorization and this this makes it easy also for the approved training organizations as far as their crowd instructors or those theoretical instructors are concerned so we can see even in page 44 all that we are correcting here is uh, that uh, alignment of crowd instructor license to crowd instructor authorization same case in regulation number 115. You can see there's nothing else changing except their, um, the wording to call them authorization. Same case with regulation 116. It's now it reads a hold of a ground instructor authorization. Uh, I am now in regulation number 119 on the licensing of flight dispatchers. We are correcting a typo. It had said dispatching or aircraft. The correct word is supposed to be off and it is picked word for word from uh, Annex 1. That was a typo error probably coming from uh, the 
um, printing stage. At page 48, we now go back to my colleague, the very able Bwana Alois Lumutu. We start again uh, on uh, the regulations that cover licensing of aircraft maintenance engineers. Once again, my colleague Alois, welcome. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> For regulation 125, sub regulation 3, uh, we are changing the category as it is in current uh, regulation from category A or C to read for category B1. And then you said B1, 36, 36 months related to airframe and engine maintenance systems, 12 months of which must be in two years immediately preceding the date of application. So here we are just changing the word uh, B1 to replace A and C. And then we're also changing 36 months from the, the, the current 24 months. The same with the, uh, in part B, instead of category X or, or avionics, we are just saying category B2, 36 months related to the avionic systems, 12 months of which must be in the two years immediately preceding the date of application. So you are just replacing the various categories X, R, to, uh, to category B2. Now, uh, sub revision 4, where an applicant for category X electrical, again, we are now changing the X to read where an applicant for category B2 holds a valid license, which is a category B1, the experience in sub revision 3B need not be complied with, and the applicant need to uh, need show only the six months experience relevant to the license without operatings required in subdivision 3C. Here, what we mean here is that if you have B1 or B2 and you are you are you want an extension to from B1 to B2, the initial requirements uh, for B1 are not uh, uh, mandatory because you already have a, 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 another license. Now, on Regulation 129, the holder shall have exercised the privileges of the license within the past 24 months preceding the date of expiry of the license. Because we are extending uh, the expiry or validity of the license to 60 months, when you want for renewal, we we'll want you to show evidence of 24 months previous experience or previous preceding the date of expiry. So as we don't just renew a license that has been demand for the last five years. That's the change we are making. In the current regulation, it is 24 months. It is six months during the 24 months uh, of validity. Now we have 24 months during the 60 months of validity. Okay. And Muchemi, the next one is yours. Thank you. Uh, the regulation 132, we deleted the regulation 132 because it appears elsewhere, it has already appeared and uh, it was a repetition. So no change, just a deletion to ensure that uh, we remove the uh, repetition. So that is all what was there and we have cited it so that somebody can be able to uh, check and see that 132 has appeared elsewhere. Same case with the regulation 133, it's a repetition and we have deleted it in totality. Uh, that appears in page 57. And uh, now I can go to regulation 139, which is now, which in the new regulations now will be regulation 137. Uh, we have made consultations with the flight operations and I'm sure the flight operations team was able to answer this. Uh, we are proposing to indicate that uh, an applicant for a cabin crew shall have completed an approved course conducted by an approved training organization certified under the Civil Aviation HU regulations. And then uh, in 137D, the new proposal 
which was also discussed, uh, I want to believe, on Monday, says that shall have completed an operator course a conversion course specific to an aircraft type requiring cabin crew member approved under the civil aviation operations of aircraft for commercial air transport regulations. Uh, we are saying this clause is introduced to cover the knowledge test previously required in the 2018 and I believe in the 2013 regulations. I mean, page 61, the last item down there, regulation 140, uh, proposed to become the new regulation 138, we are only rewarding for clarity. Uh, the citation previously, operations of aircraft, uh, regulations are now operations of aircraft for commercial air transport, and they are no longer 2013. We removed the word 2013, so that if one set of regulations uh, remains 2018, another one remains 2021 or 2022, we do not have to cite the year in this particular uh, citation. Uh, same case in the amendment appearing as number eight there. Security procedures, including the provision of civil aviation, operation of aircraft for commercial air transport regulation. Just that citation. Regulation 146. Uh, it's about the ATSEP. They had, uh, there was a desire to include the process of issuing the ATSEP licenses, and we felt that uh, this would fit into a schedule or into a guidance and not into the mainstream regulations. And therefore, this was moved from the regulations. The language was found not to be consistent with the regulatory uh, language. Therefore, we moved it to the schedule that covers ATSEP. Uh, I believe that is schedule number six. Uh, also in 147, we have a citation for uh, OJT instructor has been moved to schedule. We propose to have a new regula uh, regulation 208 uh, to give force to the rules uh, and the guidances we make as far as the uh, um, conduct of examinations is concerned. And the proposal reads that all examinations and tests required under these regulations shall be conducted in accordance with the rules issued by the authority from time to time. Uh, we say this regulation is an instrument that ensures that the guidance material and examinations are, are given a force of law by the regulation. Still on page 63, there is something about uh, modularization that will be tackled once again by uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. Lumut. Okay, thank you. On the fourth schedule, uh, this is the schedule that indicates the knowledge requirements uh, for the various modules of examinations we offer. Previously, it was, there was an error and the, it was called qualification on basic subjects for each part 66. We don't offer part 66 as KCA. What you have renamed it's called, is now called qualification on basic subjects for each aircraft maintenance license category or subcategory. Uh, should be in accordance with the following matrix. Applicable subjects are indicated by an X. So we have removed the word part 66 to rename it for clarity. Thank you. Uh, still on page uh, 64, we can see the fifth schedule. We are just aligning it to become the sixth schedule, uh, just renumbered for purposes of uh, flow and clarity. And uh, next is the schedule. Uh, a few corrections has been made to the schedule to ensure that they make, uh, they make the correct uh, reference, they make correct reference to the applicable regulations as far as the schedules uh, for offenses and penalties as covered in regulation number 206 are concerned. That is in page 65 and page 66. And with that, we come to an air, to the end. And before we close, a few questions uh, came up uh, as we were continuing. And I want just to say that we have received uh, quite a good number of questions. Yes, Dennis, you want to come in? Yes, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Um, Thank you very much, Bwana Moshemi, for taking us through the personnel licensing regulations, similarly to the co-host, uh, that's, um, I mean, co-presenter, Mr. Alois Lumutu. 
um, for taking us through the draft civil aviation um, personnel licensing regulations. Now, as our panelists are um, going through the questions that have been asked for purposes of preparing to make comments, I, we have received a number of um, requests for um, some of our presenters to come on board and give us their uh, verbal comments. We'll kindly be requesting that you accept the participation request that is coming to your end to enable you um, come on stage and make the presentation. Our panelists will be able to respond to all the questions that have been um, received. There is quite a good number that has been received um, as well as those that we will get from the comments that will be given through the verbal presentation. So we'll start off with Wanagad Kamau. You are kindly requested to come on board and uh, give us your um, presentation. Wanagad Kamau. Uh, Mr. Chairman, can you hear me? Yes, we can read you loud and clear. Kindly proceed. Thank you very much. Um, I asked a question in the last presentation as to why we still have to uh, convert our flight licenses, flight crew licenses. And the answer I got was, was I interpreted it as being disrespectful uh, because I was sent to an IKEA doc. Uh, and and the, the words used were if you want to know how licenses are converted, you can go to some IKEA doc. Now, I, I would prefer that I put this question across to you, Dennis, or to Mr. Lawrence Amukono, because I'm absolutely sure that you will not be compromised when you are searching for an answer for, for, for this particular question. Why do we have to convert licenses? And this is something that we I have taken it up with uh, previous personnel uh, way back 15 years ago. And at one point, I was told we really don't have to. It's not an IKEA requirement that we have to. We Kenya can decide to accept any uh, license from an IKEA member state and, and validate it. There is nothing that stops us from doing that. But we continue to subject applicants to activities that do not in any way add value to their uh, to, to, to them and to themselves. Now, we have a, a, an examination center and a while back I was told the examination center, a lot of money was invested into it and the government had paid a lot of money and uh, to turn around and say well you don't need to convert and the center uh, examination center was designed for that uh, government would turn around and ask kca then why did you spend so much money but um we we need to move on i can see from the presentation that some engineering licenses uh, foreign licenses are being validated and I see no reason why we cannot do that with flight crew licenses. We have continued to sustain that regulation. And I believe it's because one, and it's been over years since, since for, for a long time, is because one, there are people within aviation industry that benefit from converting foreign licenses. The, it's a money issue, it's a cash cow. And they put a lot of pressure that that license should be validated or should be converted because all it does, it doesn't add value. And we have to arrive to that point. It does not add value to the candidate because this candidate has done this license in an IKEA state. The um, syllabus are pretty much the same. They are almost equal. They are almost identical. So why are we subjecting them to that? Uh, and in the, I, I would like, first of all, to thank you, Dennis and, and Mr. Amukono, for uh, the way you have conducted uh, this webinar. It, it's impressive, and and you've been very, very, um, uh, what can I say, 
you, you, you've, you've lived up to some of our expectations. And I think the only problem that we have right now is a time factor. If we were expecting to have a lot more time to go through these regulations, especially the engineering part of the regulations. The questions here um, are just a fraction of what engineers would like to know uh, and areas they would like um, to be addressed. Um, we, we are also, uh, I'd like to thank the DG because as the webinar goes on, we have the Kenya Association of Air Operators has been in contact, in contact with the DG and the DG has been bending over backwards to, to actually um, try and um, resolve the concerns that we have. It, it, it's very good. It's, uh, it, it's very well done. So now back to the question, um, why do we still have to convert exams? A, a person who does a license and comes to Kenya and tries to validate becomes a victim of a lot of people here that are trying to make money out of him or trying to take his time. We don't have to. And we better, and I think we discussed this earlier, Dennis, that unless it is an IKO standard, we will try and give slack to the operator or to the applicant and allow them to get into uh, this business or to get into, to start operating or to start enjoying the privileges of their license without putting them through um, all that that they have to go through that, that doesn't add any value. Um, thank you, uh, okay. Dennis, I, I appreciate your time. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, uh, Captain Gad Kamau, for the comments and for your inputs. I'm sure this is something that um, will is actually still being looked into um, in terms of the conversion. We'll try our level best to ensure that we harmonize the processes and. Um, as you have correctly mentioned, um, under what is happening on some of our engineering licenses ought to be replicated in other areas of um, the CAA, as well as um, our main intention is ensuring that uh, we comply with ICAO standards and recommended practices. So upon review of our processes, if we realize that there is an unnecessary or um, a bottleneck in terms of um, issuance or facilitating the industry, the same is actually going to be looked into to ensure that it's removed from the, um, as a requirement in our very many processes. Um, we also take note of the comment that has been given, the time constraint issue that has been um, mentioned. Um, we do agree that uh, we would have wanted to have a longer period for purposes of, um, of uh, receiving input or having the debate as had been mentioned earlier by the chairman of CAO, that's uh, Kano Waidaka. Um, we would have wanted to have more time to debate. Um, that has been noted and uh, we wish to reconfirm that the CAA has um, intends to get as much input as possible, as well as provide as much time as possible um, to receive the comments from the stakeholders. That's why even after this particular session, you will have an opportunity to, inter to interrogate the final versions of the draft civil aviation regulations that have been developed, um, as well as give um, additional inputs on the same. The mode of approach for this is, um, might be a little bit different to enable um, our participants give their full input and have full participation in the in the forum. So thank you very much, Bonagad Kamau, for those comments. We had one more request for purposes of giving um, uh, verbal comments. That's Bona Paul, Bona Paul Mugi. I'll be requesting that you accept the participation request that is um, on your screen. Kindly accept the same and you will be able to give your comments during this session. You, you may or may not choose to turn on your video, but if you do so, kindly ensure that your internet connectivity is, um, is, um, is strong to ensure that we get all your 
comments. Bona Paul Mugi, kindly come on board. Kindly. Thank you. Hello, you can hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Bona Paul Mugi. You have the floor, kindly proceed. Okay, thank you. First of all, I will begin on a very sad note, having lost one of our maintenance uh, technician, that is uh, Samson Magare, uh, yesterday. And uh, on that, but also I'd like to thank you for this chance and the way the forum has been conducted since it started. Now, I would like to make my uh, comments uh, regarding a few things, especially on, on uh, license. That is for the maintenance engineers. Now, on regulation number 129, uh, sub one paragraph a b c d and uh, as mr alumutu has uh, stated that uh, you require experience of two years that is 24 months proof that you've been uh, in active maintenance now uh, from what i heard uh, from everyone that these things are uh, of as per ikeo requirements i can see there is a lot of uh, of uh, literature borrowed from IASA, and at one point I see there was an error having quoted part 66, which we don't have. On this, I would like to request, and uh, this, this is uh, one of the things I say that what goes around comes around, because if you require an uh, KCA uh, inspector to have the experience, then I don't know where they are going to get it from. Uh, post folders is the same problem and uh, also eight years because uh, still we don't have uh, eight years apart maybe from kenya Airways and a few others that are attached to a maintenance organization then it becomes difficult my issue is that uh, this should be considered uh, that uh, when you're renewing your license so long as you hold the license then you should not have conditions for renewal because you are not exercising but if today i go to an amo then for the for me to uh, exercise the privileges of the license, then that is where that the experience should be required by the QA. Okay, that's my point number one. Then there is another point on, uh, and uh, I, I mean on, on still the same point, it would be logic for me now to want to come and work for KCA because uh, that means automatically I lose my license. Okay, because if I go to work on an in NAMO, AMO, that is conflict of interest. And uh, since I'm not exercising the privileges of the license, then I don't see why the renewal part should be a prerequisite for doing that. Now, I also go to regulation number nine and uh, say that uh, on the extension of uh, the renewal up to 60 months, uh, that one I commend about it and also request that uh, regulation on regulation 128 uh, sub but uh, regulation 128 that is sub 5 uh -huh, there is this i request that this requirement be deleted completely because it is in contradiction of the same regulation because i don't know why uh, we are giving leeway to a person that, uh, let me check what the regulation states, that you can have the armor appoint someone who is not licensed. I, I mean, uh, if we are encouraging people to get the licenses and giving an armor a leeway to not utilize the same licenses you're telling people to work for, I mean, uh, for me, that would not uh, really be helping the industry. Uh, the other thing I would request that the form we are currently using for Mayor 29, in uh, the way it is, it's an outdated, outdated format and not capturing what is required. Some of the information we are asked to write, I don't think it's uh, very necessary. Uh, the other issue would be, uh, The, the, the other issue, uh, as has been uh, said, is the issue of having the cut A being removed. Uh, for those mostly in entry 
of the aviation maintenance this is usually done in some companies as uh, transit checks these are line these are line checks uh, simple test and uh, i mean for all stations where probably you don't need to have b ones this can be an, ent an entry uh, point for as an a licensed as you proceed to maybe getting your full type course because this one is usually more of a familiarization uh, course uh, one week or two weeks plus the practical part where you don't need a really complex uh, uh, information or uh, systems full system type training and uh, with that i thank you those are my concerns and the same will be addressed in written form thank you okay Thank you very much, Bona Paul Mugi, for your comments and inputs. Um, this has been well received and will be addressed by our panelists shortly, who will be coming to the stage. I'll request that they keep, they try as much as possible to be precise and straight to the point for purposes of um, ensuring we do not eat so much into our lunch hour. On the comment for on um, amendment of some of the forms that will be tackled by the panelists who will be coming on board. So I'll request Bona Lumutu and Bona Mushemi to come back on stage for purposes of going through all the comments that we've received um, in terms of the written submissions as well as the oral presentations that have been given by uh, Mr. Paul Mugi and uh, Bona Gad Kamau. So, um, Bona Mushemi, Bona Lumutu, kindly take to the stage for purposes of um, responding to some of the questions that have been um, that have been given. I'll kindly request that you be as brief and as precise as possible, direct to the direct to the point. So, Bona Lumutu, kindly take the stage, um, and Bona Mushemi, you can decide on who to go first. Maybe Bwana Moshemi can start us off for purposes of um, going through the questions that are that under the questions tab. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dennis. Before I... Hello. Uh, there's an echo coming. Before I continue, I want to invite the manager, personal licensing to Take it up from here, and I'll come back after my manager has after my manager has made his comment. Welcome, uh, Bona Empel. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Senior Mucheni, and also the moderator, uh, Dennis, and uh, all the panelists that are available today for these regulations. My name is Julius Zoka, Manager Personal Licensing, and. Uh, I just need to put a comment to say that uh, in the review in the regulations, we have tried our level best to ensure that we comply with the standards that recommend the practices, and especially as outlined in the next one. Um, excuse me, probably just before you proceed, I'll kindly request that you check on your mic to ensure that the same is. The quality is adequate because we have uh, so much in the presentation. So kindly check on your microphone for purposes of um, better quality and to reduce the echo effect. So as we are doing that, uh, Bwana Moshemi, you can kindly come on board for purposes of, um, of uh, giving us feedback or if Bwana um, Zioka, if your microphone is now in order, you can um, come on stage. Kindly accept the participation link that is there uh, that will enable you um, address the forum. So, Bonanzioka. Bonanzioka, kindly come on stage, accept the the link to join the forum. Bonanzioka, we still cannot um, read you. So um, we'll we'll get the comments from the. 
uh, manager personnel licensing on some of the issues that have been um, raised here. We are having some challenges in connecting Bwana and Zioka. Just give us a minute to ensure that happens. So even as that is happening, um, we will be inviting uh, Mr. James Moshemi together with uh, Alois Lumutu for purposes of giving feedback on the on the um, comments that have been received so far. I kindly request that you accept the participation link to enable you to um, give your comments. Bwana Julius Nzioka, I can see you on board. Um, kindly let us have your comments for purposes of um, for purposes of um, responding to the questions that have been raised. I'll also be requesting Mr. James Moshemi to come on board for purposes of the response. And if you can do so at the earliest so that we do not eat so much into our, our lunchtime. Okay. Uh, thank you, Bwana Dennis. Uh, thank you, Bwana Dennis. Um, before I respond to the questions, um, I, I can see there are so many uh, participants who are uh, asking questions. These questions, we are a team of from Airworthiness, uh, led by uh, Manager Airworthiness, Madam Mary Keter. We have uh, Mr. Peter Kakai, and we also have uh, Timothy Rotich on the background. I can see they are responding to some of your questions. Now, um, very fast on the question that has been raised by Paul Mugi. Paul Mugi, thank you very much for your question. Um, on the two years experience renewal, uh, this was introduced um, to avoid uh, people holding licenses and not utilizing them. But your input has been taken on board. We are going to discuss as a team and uh, provide guidance on your on your concern. On Regulation 128, Regulation 128, where you are uh, indicating that um, uh, the unlicensed people are given privileges uh, to work on the aircraft or sign by the AMOs, uh, maybe this is as a result of um, interpretation issues. We don't mean um, an AMO giving a blanket uh, authority for unlicensed uh, engineer to work on the aircraft. But what we are doing is that for some special, uh, for some special uh, uh, functions, like say welding, painting, we may authorize uh, the AMO through their procedures approved by the authority to identify uh, somebody competent enough to work or to conduct those activities without necessarily having a license. So it is not working on aircraft as such, but some special functions, probably a workshop or, a workshop or other special uh, authorizations. On the form of dated, uh, we agree, once we promulgate these regulations, we are going to work on all our forms to make them relevant. Um, the next item was about uh, category A rating. I know this is, um, this is a, a borrowed uh, aspect from IASA, as you put it. However, in our current situation, um, even somebody with a B1 and B2 license may not release the aircraft. So this cut A may be what you call um, A rating, or can, can be exercised by the AMOs themselves, probably granting a specific limited authorizations for somebody who is having B1 and B2 but does not have a type rating. If you have B1 and B2 and you don't have a type rating, then an AMO can come up with a procedure of giving a limited rating to such a person. And that one, that's what we call A rating. So we don't want to introduce an A rating as authority to stamp on your license because there's administrative issues and we may not be able to, uh, to, uh, to, to monitor or specify what activities you're supposed to, to do. This one, we are allowing the AMOs to work on their internal uh, systems and probably give limited limited authorization for specific tasks. And that one, they can call it A rating at the AMO level, but not at the authority level. Now, there are so many other questions that have been received. 
uh, in writing and some are repeated on the question ask question box and we received an input from Paul Dairo Mugi uh, an input from Paul Dairo Mugi a written input where number one he's asking um, the certificate of validation is saying a certificate of validation be valid for 12 months non renewable and he's saying the word months are missing that is noted the second item is that you are saying that uh, regulation to have the 60 months from the date of issue these are good uh, uh, good gesture and we thank you for that input the third item is that to have new amendment deleted on license renewal requirements or regulation 129 that is you have also asked that in a verbal or oral input and i've explained the reason why because we don't uh, we don't want to encourage people having licenses and keeping them in the houses and they are they are doing other things without doing maintenance so we want every license to have a meaning in the industry uh item number four you're saying that um, regulation 1885 should be deleted as it is in breach and contradiction of the same regulation 98 under components which is already well captured and under aviation repair specialist that's the same item we just addressed on regulation 128 about the unlicensed engineers regulation 123 general use of word typewriting while intended correct word should be endorsement with typewriting okay that one is noted that one is noted uh, the input is taken in we are going to debate on it and the final item you are requested to review the form AR 129 that has also been addressed uh, we also received input from Joseph Otieno Oyoga Joseph Otieno Oyoga has raised issues on various regulations but specifically on personnel licensing he is raised issue on regulation 24 he talks about validation of foreign AML or issue of certificate of validation should be limited to those competent authorities that have a working agreement with KCA like Qatar to avoid influx of foreign engineers thereby denying competent Kenyan AML holders job opportunities and also to avoid misuse of this regulation by AMOS that input has been taken in and that is why we are putting a cap of 12 months non-renewable 12 months non-renewable um, another item you raised uh, Mr. Oyoga is that the requirement of experience when renewing AML should be deleted because it serves no purpose for a license without typewriting. The higher responsibility for currency comes with the endorsements on the license. This one we take in your comment but just to uh, comment on it uh, is that as the authority we issue uh, the license with a purpose and the license can only remain current with certain conditions so those are the conditions we'll be looking at as the authority during the renewal of a license and then the other item you raised is non-renewable 12 months certificate of validation is okay to avoid situation where foreign AML holders don't apply for conversion thank you very much that has been uh, taken in and then uh, personnel licensing again Wana Oyoga have also raised the issue to have the regulation remain as per proposed 60 months validity that is taken in and uh, if you approve that one will remain we've also received comments from our Facebook followers from the Facebook followers um, Mr. John Kamau Mr. John Kamau is asking if it is possible to convert ESL part 66B 1.1 license modules taken under part 147 ATO. I, I, I get your concern when John Kamau however we have not still have a formal agreement with IASA as per this regulation that has been proposed once we have a formal agreement with IASA or the uh, part, part 66 then your input can be considered however today as it is today we only recognize a complete license a complete license either b1 or b2 okay. um, there are some inputs or concerns that have been made on the ask the question box ask the question box i would like uh, the manager pell 
to take us through his part, then probably I will uh, wrap up on the AML issues. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Lomoto, and thank you, the mod moderator. Uh, that is Attorney Dennis Kimani, and uh, also the senior licensing officer, Muchemi, for the good input that uh, has been uh, going on this time. Thank you, the participants. Uh, my name is Julia Zioka, Manager Personal Licensing. And uh, before we go to the question, uh, I'll ask new questions. I wanted to clarify something on uh, the concept of uh, a validation and a conversion license. Uh, when you go to IKO Annex 1, we have standard 1.2.2 all the way to one point, uh, all the way to one point two, to one, two, three, two, four. It talks about uh, the method and the procedures for a conversion of a license. And uh, it's like we have just gone back to the same, same. Uh, that's what you have extracted from uh, the annex to our regulations that uh, our teams were presenting around. And it gives the leeway on what we are supposed to do and what you are not supposed to do. So uh, it is from the IKEA standard. And if we need to have any difference, then we need to go into that. We do analysis like the way we have the stakeholders today. And then we take all the inputs and they check what qualifies to be included and what does not qualify to be included. I beg to differ slightly with the, our able Captain Gad Kamau on the concept of validation, because when we go to that standard, it talks about uh, that method that has been uh, given out, including the agreements that uh, Mr. Lumut has mentioned on uh, an agreement between states on uh, the methods that are going to be using to ensure surveillance, to ensure common understanding and the common methods of uh, issuing of a license so that at the end of the day we are able to monitor what we issue because the concept of the standards the IQ only gives the minimum and then from there we develop some procedures that we are able to do and uh, we go back to what you call the eight critical elements on uh, the concepts of uh, the licenses and authorization of personnel which of course we need to adhere to. It's a good input, we are going to look into it and we are going to perhaps with the, with the moderate around, all those inputs have been taken and we'll consider them and then we will give a response as much as possible. Thank you. And uh, I hand over back to Dennis, if there is anything else on the question time of the ask the new questions, question, I remember to come in and uh, perhaps uh, give my input. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, manager, personnel licensing. Uh, I will very fast run through the questions that you've asked on the ask question box. Uh, I will try as much as possible at my level. <coughs> if there will be, if there'll be a requirement for input from either my manager or Buana Kakai or Buana Rotich or can add, I can see some have been responded to by the team. Uh, the first one came from Patrick Ouma. Patrick Ouma, you are saying they currently explain what AML category A, B1, and B2 cover. This one I have explained that B1, B1 is what we currently know as A and C. But now under A and C, we and under when we come out to B1, we'll having B1.1 that will cover fixed wing aeroplanes, turbine engines. B1.2, fixed wing, aeroplane, piston engines. B1.3, helicopters, turbine engines. 
B1.4 helicopters, piston engines. Uh, the category A part of it, we as the authority, uh, we will amend that and remove it from our regulations. And we want to give that opportunity to AMOs so as they can actually or probably do a familiarization course to some of their identified engineers or technicians, but with B1 and B2 without operating so that they do a slight or a financial cost to allow them to release with the limited uh, capacity. That will be handed over to an AMO. Uh, Tony Malala, you will also be issuing uh, Category A. I've just clarified that. We'll not be issuing Category A license. We'll be issuing B1 or B2. Uh, uh, Juma Lenin, that is on air traffic services. That will be handled by Bwana Uh Paul Mugi, you are saying, I propose to have category A license to be retained so as to have those new to the maintenance able to handle minor scheduled line maintenance and simple defect rectification within the limits of tasks endorsed on certification authorization. Bwana Mugi, you realize that even after attaining B1 or B2 basic license, you still don't have privileges for release. So we cannot introduce a category A for the purpose of release. And that's why we are saying that category A will be pursued by the various AMOs for those technicians who have B1 or B2, but have not done full type course approval. They can be offered familiar courses so that to have a limited release of aircrafts. Uh, Patrick Uma, with the withdrawal of AML Cat A in Regulation 5.8, will call for review and amendment of Regulation 5.9 as well. Please confirm if this is correct. I can see uh, the response you've been given, uh, the input you've been given, the response by Manager Ayawatness, uh, that the input has been taken, we will review. Uh, Nicholas Kamau, this is touching on Bana uh, Mushemi. We'll handle that from, from Nicholas Kamau. Tony Malala, uh, I recommend that Category A license be retained so as to have those new to maintenance be able to handle minor schedules. This is similar to what I've just uh, responded to. Uh, Sami Gishuki, you are kindly advised on current position on online license issue or renewal. Uh, I can see you have been responded to. The authority is in the process of automating its processes, including licensing of personnel. That is well taken in. Uh, Joseph Foyuga, what happens to autopilot protocraft? Does it now mean that B2 will now be merged or, or on one license? Oh, Banoyuga, uh, B2 is a basic avionics license that covers all avionics, avionics related or uh, avionics related skills. Uh, if now, there's some echo. If you want now to specialize on rotorcraft, that means that you now do a course on the rotorcraft, and therefore the rotorcraft pilot will be offered only after a due diligence on course that you've done, and therefore we can endorse your B2 as rotorcraft. However, this authorization will be limited to the type training that you've received in the AMO. So initially you need to have a B2 license and then uh, on specialization, you now do a special course on the particular aircraft. Uh, Paul Mugi, my proposal that the license should be validated only by those holding foreign licenses and with the contracting states that KC has agreement with. This proposal has been taken in. However, the ICAO uh, requires that we recognize or licenses issued by competent contracting authorities. So this is not a choice of the authority, but we are bound to recognize them. However, for automatic conversion or validation, we we'll require to have an agreement with various uh, authorities. Uh, Joseph Oyuga, does it now mean that those currently holding certificate of validation based on their foreign licenses, we lose them? When this regulation comes into effect, I can see uh, Mr. Rotich have given you an answer 
and he says that validation is usually time bound and it is never permanent for those with validation currently running will run for the full time of six months and then they, they'll have to meet the requirement of the new regulations when it comes to force then Patrick Oma Kenyan AML ratings used to be for aircraft below 57,000 kilograms take of weight while most foreign licenses ratings are for aircraft above 5,700 uh, kilograms with regulation 24.3 in mind how is the authority going to balance this uh, Bana Patrick what you have done is that all ratings are now going to be endorsed in the license uh, below or above uh, the 5,700 kilograms with the new regulations we are going to endorse all ratings in the license uh, Maureen Nyaga can one seek an extension on validation under extenuation extraordinary circumstances is there a provision for such a case uh, Maureen Nyaga currently the proposal is the validation is once for 12 months but in the event somebody seeks or intends to work beyond that we will recommend that he pursue conversion uh -huh. Dorcas Atieno is asking for those who are pursuing AME license currently on different categories how will the transition to the new regulations affect them uh, Dorcas I can see Rotich has responded to you and he said there shall be a transition period during whichever exams that were successfully completed will be recognized. Just to add on that, assuming that you are currently having a cut X electrical and you don't have other uh, categories elements on B2, we'll give you will we'll give you B2 with the limitation only to cover electrical. And then we'll identify the relevant modules that you need to cover so that you transit to full B2. This will be advised in the industry once the regulations are promulgated. Gidai uh, Mwaniki uh, on AML, Regulation 9, to increase validity of AML from 24 months to 60 months. This recommend, recommendation is well overdue and it's a proper and should be approved and implemented as soon as possible. Thank you, Banagidai, for that input. Uh, Simon Mugo, Regulation 126.1c, if aircraft is first type on Civil Aviation Register, is there a process to qualify maintenance personnel or engineers who can't meet the six months experience requirement but have successfully completed a license factory type course? Then I uh, can see um, Manager Air Authorities has responded and uh, uh, it is indicated that the authority is currently developing the process and we share with the stakeholders to support implementation of this reviewed regulation uh, Simon Mugo this is why also we are giving a provision for 12 months validation so as you can identify the qualified engineer uh, wherever the country we validate his license and then this person will now qualify our local engineers during the 12 months period Uh, Samson Mwatati just realized that when you download this presentation the sick schedule is not clear that is noted Bwana Mwatati Simon Mugo regulation 128.2 and 128.3 both B1 and B2 can issue CRS for electrical systems where do you draw the line uh, Bwana Simon Mugo we know that B1 can issue some CRS on some functions that are for B2 however there's a condition that so long as it does not require a special tool and so long as just a replacement a line replacement replaceable unit but not uh, repair not modification not um, not uh, working on the complete uh, B2 or electrical system the guidance however once we promulgate the, the regulation will give a guidance on how this will overlap uh, Joseph Oyuga I hold that this experience of six months needed when renewing a license should be amended to include those who are not active in aircraft maintenance but hold licenses like KCA inspectors 
and ATO instructors because as it stands now it will mean that they will automatically lose their licenses uh, that is not a doyuga we are going to deliberate on that and see how your input can be accommodated Bana Agre Kangahi Agre Kangahi is asking regarding AML in terms of endorsing ratings we should consider initial factory OEM training as only prerequisite for the type endorsement as opposed to have an examination again conducted by our local authority Bana Agre that input is noted I can see Bwana Rotich responded and he said that your recommendation is noted and shall be considered during the review of the proposed regulations. Uh, Patrick Oma, Patrick Oma, kindly request for addition of complex aircraft under Regulation 2, interpretation for clarity on Regulation 163. Uh, I can see the response has been given. This is a good recommendation. We shall consider adding uh, this uh, complex aircraft into our interpretation. Uh -huh. Thank you, Mugi. You said that is well and clear. Uh, Daudi Mukula, if for application of renewal of AML is required to show 24 months practice, how will quality manager and KCA inspectors show experience and they don't work on aircraft? Please clarify. I can see you have been responded to. The authority has a policy and procedure to guide inspectors while quality managers are guided by AMO procedures acceptable to the authority. Just to add on that, Buana Muluka, even a quality uh, manager is, is doing a maintenance function and therefore is not excused or is not, uh, is not exempted from this provision. Henry Lecken, Henry Lecken, category A aeroplanes license covers for both piston and turbine aeroplanes unlike C engines which are specific in the new draft A will be converted to what? Bana uh, Henry what you are saying is that uh, going forward A and C will become one category and we'll call it B1. In the process of acquiring B1 license you'll have covered syllabus that covers both airframe and the engines. Uh, Patrick Ouma, Patrick Ouma is asking, please clarify the requirements of Regulation 1.65 on competence-based training for aircraft maintenance personnel by an ATO for an applicant or group of type ratings endorsements. Bwana Patrick Ouma, I know you are talking about the requirement of the experience. Uh, if you have, um, if you can only apply for license, if you have five years experience for those who don't have technical training. For those with technical training, you require three years experience. And for those with technical training and ha has gone through a professional license AML course uh, in an approved ATO, will require two years training. I think that is, uh, those are the questions. I don't know if there's a uh, addition, uh, uh, Bwana Rotich, wherever you are, if there's something you want to add, um, manager or Bwana Kakai. Thank you very much, uh, Bwana Timo okay. Lumut, for that very comprehensive feedback, especially on AML um, provisions. I'll kindly request our Mr. James Moshemi to come on board and um, provide uh, feedback on areas touching on PEL regulations only. Bwana Moshemi. Uh, Bona Moshemi, kindly unmute your microphone so that we can be able to get your comments and feedback. Hello. Yes, we can read it now. Kindly close it. 
Thank you uh, once again, uh, Dennis, for the very good work. Thank you, Manager Personnel Licensing, uh, my manager, for your response, and also Buana Lumutu. Um, just one or two things that have come up as far as uh, the pay regulations are concerned. Dane Kazugu, uh, I'm sure you've seen the comment uh, about ATSEP, and uh, thank you for the correction. The S stands for safety, not services. Thank you, and we will make sure that is taken care of in the draft uh, in the 2021 regulations. The other thing that had come up, not in these particular questions, was about uh, conversion of flight dispatch licenses. Uh, I think it is from uh, one Mr. Mudoni, uh, Maina Mudoni. And um, as of now, the Annex 1 and the, the ICAO doc uh, that guides on the issue of personal licenses, that is Doc 9379, they have not made a provision for conversion of both the flight dispatch license and the air traffic control license. But we as a state are trying to come together and probably will invite the input of the industry when we come to that to see how best we can address uh, applicants coming with a license, uh, a flight dispatch from another jurisdiction. Uh, sometimes back we clarified about the ground instructor as there was a question about uh, the definition and uh, we noted that the definition of a ground instructor is, also, is already taken care of under the definition authorized instructor and uh, they are, we also have had a, a, a question uh, I think it is from uh, uh, Mr. Dick Motodori, Engineer Dick Motodori, about license with an S and license with a C. And, uh, uh, you know, some jurisdictions use the C, some use an S, but uh, the Annex 1 states that in the general information area of Annex 1, the latest amendment, they have stated that the expression license with a C used throughout the Annex 1 has the same meaning as the expressions Certificate of, of Competence and License, also License of Certificate and a License with an S. So we try as much as possible to use the license with a C, but anytime it will appear with an S, uh, the meaning is the same. The intended meaning remains the same as far as the guidance from Annex 1 is concerned. We also have had another request. Um, um, somebody indicated that the license battle is cumbersome. Any chance the authority will move to a uh, single card digital format? Uh, I would have wanted Dennis to answer this one, but the, process, the, the, the position of the authority is that there is a, a, a team sitting down on the automation uh, process. And this is one of the deliverables that we should uh, that we expect to see once the automation process is concerned. Back to the questions here, Nicholas Kamau, you are requesting that we remove the fifty percent rule uh, as far as the examination partial pass of examinations are concerned. Your uh, input is received, and we are also looking at alongside other other inputs from uh, other stakeholders and we will sit down and come to an amicable conclusion to this. And I think... I think the rest of the questions are coming from... Uh, have been taken care of by my colleague, uh, Mr. Lumutu. So thank you very much. I will hand over to Dennis, and uh, thank you for that session. Thank you very much once again from Moshevi.
uh, sorry, sorry, very, um, unfortunately, my microphone was off and my apologies for that. Um, saying that we received a number of um, comments, just two, um, as Bwana Moshemi was making his uh, comments. I'll request Mr. Lumutu to come on board just to take um, these two um, questions that have been raised. Actually, it's more of uh, providing clarifications on some of the answers. So Bwana Lumutu kindly come on stage. Thereafter, we will be taking our lunch break. Bwana Lumutu. Uh, thank you, Dennis. I can see uh, two more uh, requests for clarification. One is from Alex Mudui. Alex Mudui is asking further to the response that all ratings will now be endorsed on the license. Does it mean that there will be no KC exams for aircraft below 5,700 kilograms? The answer is there will still be exams for aircraft below 5,700 kilograms from uh, by uh, with uh, administered by KCA however aircraft above that will be uh, issued or be uh, going through assessment procedure qualification procedure to be determined by the AMO and approved by the authority however below 57 will still be administering as KCA uh, Mr. Patrick Oma say thank you uh, but regulation talks about aircraft maintenance personnel rating that is it's calling for the requirement for competency-based training for maintenance personnel by an ATO kind request for clarity on this requirement yes Bana Patrick or oh, this requirement means that for you to get a rating you must be trained by a competent and recognized ATO a competent and recognized ATO with uh, with approval from the authority the ATO must be accepted by the authority, and that is when you will have uh, to will have to recognize your type rating uh, certificate. So when you are doing the training, you must ensure that the ATO that is conducting the training is the right one before uh, starting the training. I think those are the only two concerns. Otherwise, thank you very much, Dennis. So thank you very much, Bona Lumutu, for um, giving us the responses that um, to the questions that have been raised, to the comments and the concerns that had been that had been raised. I also want to thank all our participants for um, indulging us up to this point. That is um, late into the lunch hour for purposes of giving your comments and receiving feedback or input on the on the on the same i can see a comment by uh on agad kamau engineers need a special session to address all their concerns this sector is too, too critical we need to get clarity in every regulation going forward thank you very much for your comments on kamau um, the same has been taken on board and as um kc as kcaa we confirm and we reaffirm that we will be listening to all the input from the various um, players in the industry and um, if it actually calls for additional forums the same will be organized and they will be communicated we have all your email addresses um, th that is the email addresses used during the registration process and you will be notified accordingly on um, any subsequent uh, forums on this Ladies and gentlemen, kindly allow me to um, request that we proceed on on a, on a 15 minutes break before we come back for the afternoon session, where we will be going through some of the um, um, regulations touching on CNS. We will have one on um, surveillance and collisions avoider system, aeronautical search and rescue, as well as the radio frequency spectrum utilization regulations. Please note that we are still open to receiving any additional input through written submissions. The same can be submitted to KCAA through the dedicated email address that is there. That's kcas2021 at kcaa.or.ke. 
please take note that um, once all these um, comments are received, they will be collated and presented in a tabular format, then posted on our website, and you will have an opportunity to interrogate the same and see what consideration when, went into the final draft civil aviation regulations. So uh, with that, ladies and gentlemen, and also um, um, expressing our sincere condolence to the loss of Mr. Samson Magare, kindly um, accept accept the same. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, kindly allow us to take a 15 minutes break. Um, as always, the process of joining the next forum is um, by following the link that is going is being posted right now on the on the ask a question page this will enable you transition into the next forum without hitches or glitches so ladies and gentlemen kindly let's proceed on the break and asanteni sana for the valuable input and comments asanteni <laughs>